Adam here, and I've got another story for you tonight. This is part of a golden, a little golden book series. I'm not sure if you're familiar with those, but they're actually really good uh, children's stories, and they usually have a good moral. Uh, this in particular one, I've not read it before, but uh, I'm super excited about it. I do know of it. It's How the Camel Got Its Hump. How the Camel Got Its Hump. I'm pretty excited about this, so let's go ahead and get to it. How the Camel Got Its Hump, Tales from Around the World. Welcome. I am Sherry Zod, and I know a thousand and one tales. Today I will tell you some camel tales, from the, for the camel is the most amazing animal. Every part of its body is just right for life in the hot, cold, windy, and dry, dry, dry desert. No part of the camel's body is more amazing than its hump. How did the camel get its hump? Listen, and I will tell you. The great storyteller Aesop said the camel was created by the mighty Greek god Zeus. One day, horse asked Zeus for a long neck and a broad chest and a built-in saddle. The next thing horse knew, why, he'd become a camel. But if you think that would satisfy the camel, you don't know how camels. You don't know camels. The Chinese tell a tale of camel asking the creator for broad feet for walking on shifting sands, long eyelashes for keeping out wind, and a lump, a hump, or two for carrying food and water. The creator granted all of, the, all of this. But was the camel happy? No, because all the other animals laughed at its funny-looking humps. The camel asked to have the, its humps, homely humps, removed. But how could this be done? But this could not be done. How can I go on with all the an other animals looking down on me, whined the camel. You shall look down on them, thundered the creator. From that day on, camels had such a haughty look that no other animal dared laugh at them again. And camels still have their hairy humps which comes in handy in the desert, as you will learn in my next tale. Long ago lived a bandit and his hard-working camel. Day and night they rode over endless shifting sands. They rode in the heat of the day. They traveled through the cold of the night. They rode into whirling sandstorms. Camel's feet became flat from walking. Its eyelashes grew long from squinting. Its chest and knees grew furry for resting on the cold ground. Camel became strong from carrying heavy sacks of food, water, and coins. But never once did the bandit share his food or water with the poor camel. So Camel learned to do without, except for what, what it could find in the dry, dry, dry desert. One day, Camel's broad foot bumped a magic lamp that contained a genie. As everyone knows, if you ever find a genie, it will grant you three wishes. So the bandit snatched the lamp and asked the genie for 50 bags of wealth and 50 years of health. Before he could make his third wish, Camel grunted, I walked us here. I found the lamp. I want a wish. Very well, said the genie. What do you command? The camel said, I wish the water I carried was for myself. Instantly, camel had its hump. And the bandit had his 50 bags of wealth, but he didn't pay taxes on it. So the bandit was sent to jail, where he was always thirsty for 50 years. But camel, it's never thirsty unless it forgets to fill its hump. But what about the most famous camel got its hump story? The one by Rudyard Kipling. That story takes place when the world was so new that there were only a few animals, including a, the lazy camel. During the first three days of the world, the other, other animals worked very hard. Then horse asked camel to trot with him, but the camel said, Humph! Dog asked Camel to help him fetch and carry, but Camel said, Humph! 
ox asked Camel to help him plow, but Camel said, Humph! The animals begged the, the djinn, or genie of all deserts, to do something about the lazy camel. He won't trot, said horse. He won't fetch, said dog. He won't plow, said ox. He just says, Humph! I'll humph him, if you'll kindly wait a minute, said the genie. Alakazam! To the camel, the genie said, do you see that? That's your very own humph that you brought on your, your very own self for, by not working. How can I work with a hump on my back? The camel huffed. The genie explained, you can work three times harder because you can live off your hump. And the camel still works three times harder because it has never caught up with the three days that it missed at the beginning of the world. Ships of the Desert A camel's body is perfect for the desert home. Each camel comes with fantastic features. <laughs> Here's a couple of those fantastic features. The amazing hump. Camel's hump is made of fat. This fat can become filled inside, uh, become water inside the camel's body. A well-fed camel's hump is large and firm. A hungry camel's hump shrinks and sags. One hump or two. Arabian camels have one hump, while Bactrian camels have two. Ears. Their hair, their hair keeps out blowing sand. Eyes. Long, thick eye, uh, lashes keep out sand, but thin eyelashes let in light. A camel can walk through sandstorms with its eyes closed. Nose. Nostrils squeeze shut to keep out sand. The nose can take in moisture from the camel's breath. Knees and chest. Extra thick skin forms padding for resting on hard ground. And feet. Wide foot pads help the camel walk on shifting sand. Ha rump camel attitude. Camels are hardworking, helpful animals. They can also be smelly, and sometimes they spit on or bite their handlers. Camels often groan when they are being loaded or unloaded, and they are famous for being grouchy. As Rudyard Kipling knew so well, if camels could talk, they would surely say, Humph! Well, I really hope that you enjoyed this story. This is uh, How the Camel Got Its Hump. It's part of the Little Golden Books series, and uh, like I said, these are really great stories. They always have some sort of moral to them, and uh, they're classic children's stories. Uh, if you'd like to find more stories, we've got a whole archive of them, and you can find those. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Enjoy.